What's going on guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're finally taking a look at the Google Home. So this is Google's answer to the Amazon Echo, and it's powered by the Google Voice Assistant, the same technology that's also launching with the Google Pixel, which I recently reviewed. And for the most part, it works very similarly, but there are some limitations. So this retails for 129, is available only in one style, but you can swap out the bases if you want to mix it up a bit. So getting to the unboxing, if you look around, you can see this does refer to some of its features, including the far field voice recognition system with that dual microphone built into the top. This is also compatible with 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks and does work with iOS and Android devices. We do have high excursion speakers, so it does deliver really clear sound, though it's not going to replace your hi-fi system anytime soon. So the first thing we have to do is peel off the tabs along the side so we can remove the top sleeve. And once we do that, we can get into the box. Now the packaging is actually very similar to the Google OnHub, which I reviewed a little over a year ago now. So once I lift this up, you can see there is a tray at the bottom that we can lift up. And the first thing we'll see is some paperwork. It does explain how to use the touch controls at the top, in addition to some of the voice commands you can use on this device. We also get a flyer that highlights some of the optional bases you can swap out, which includes both fabric and metal styles. The only accessory we'll find in the bottom of the box is our power supply, which is very nicely designed. It does include some cable management so you can keep it nice and tidy, which I think is especially important if you want to put this on your kitchen counter. So getting to the design of the Google Home, it is much more compact than something like the Echo, and it's also less technical looking. It looks like it might fit in with the rest of your decor. But of course, to many people, this looks a little like an air freshener. So once you hear that, it's kind of hard to get that sight out of your mind. But I think it's a fairly attractive design, especially with the swappable bases. Now, before I plug it into Powered Up for the first time, I just want to show you what this looks like when you remove the base. So the base is magnetic. In fact, if you look at the inside of the base, you'll see the magnets that interface with the unit itself on the bottom. Now, with the base off, you can see the speaker design, which is meant to be omnidirectional. So it should fill a room fairly effectively and it is a pretty decent speaker although it won't challenge the best Bluetooth speakers out there. Now although it looks like three speakers it's actually a single two inch driver and two passive radiators on each side. So you get a good amount of bass and punch to the speaker especially for its size but it doesn't have this nice open sound to it. We'll also find a micro USB port along the back for servicing the software. Now this is not accessible when the base is installed so it's really not meant to be used but it's there in case it's needed. So once I reinstall the base I can go ahead and attach the power cable and get it booted up for the first time. Now, before we go through the setup process, along the back, there is a mute button. So if you want to mute the microphone so it's not listening to you, you can activate that. We also have an LED indicator, which lets us know that the device is powered on. Now, toward the top, we have this touch surface, which allows us to interact with the device in a number of ways. We can turn up the volume, we can activate the listening mode, or we can just stop or pause playback of music. But also on the top are these two microphones, which are far field microphones, which are designed to be used across the room. In fact, they're so sensitive, I can can basically talk across the house through several rooms and it can hear the wake up command. The other great thing about these microphones is that they're able to hear your voice even if the music is very loud. That tends to be a problem with the Echo. So to set up the Google Home, you will need an app called Home. This is a free app that's available for both iOS and Android. So the Google Home app is actually the same app you use to set up the Chromecast. And the setup process is very similar here. Soon as the device is powered on, the app will be able to see it on your network and you can connect and set it up for the first time. Now during the setup process, you do get a tone that lets you know when the device is connected. You're also prompted to name the Google Home on your network. So if you have multiple versions in different rooms, you can name them according to the room they're in. You'll also be prompted to sign into your Wi-Fi network and to log in with your Google account. And once that's done, you just have to install any of the available updates, which happen automatically. Now, in case you're wondering, the Google Voice Assistant is smart enough to keep track of which device is answering a question. That's especially important with the Pixel because it also has the same voice recognition technology. Okay, Google, what's the weather tomorrow? Tomorrow in Rochester Hills, it'll be sunny with a high of 61 and a low of 43. So you can see it says answering on another device. So it's keeping track of which device is responding. Okay, Google, what's the weather in Toronto? In Toronto tomorrow, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 59 and a low of 48. Okay, Google, what about New York? In New York City tomorrow, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 58 and a low of 47. Okay, Google, how do I get there? I don't support directions yet. New York is 9 hours and 57 minutes from your location by car in light traffic. So as you can see, this is very conversational, so it's able to keep track of what you said before. Okay, Google, how tall is the Empire State Building? The Empire State Building is 1,250 feet tall. Okay, Google, what about the Burj Khalifa? The Burj Khalifa is 2,717 feet tall. Okay, Google, who directed Star Trek First Contact? Star Trek First Contact was directed by Jonathan Frakes. Okay, Google, what about Independence Day? 
Independence Day Resurgence was directed by Roland Emmerich. Okay, Google. What about the original movie? Independence Day was directed by Roland Emmerich. Okay, Google. What is Ford stock price? The price for Ford Motor Company shares on NYSE is eleven dollars and fifty-six cents as of two twenty p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. Okay, Google. What about apples? The price for Apple stock on Nasdaq is one hundred ten dollars and thirty-eight cents as of two twenty p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. Okay, Google. What's in the news? Here's the latest news from NPR News Summary at two p.m. today. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Lakshmi Singh. Okay, Google, play the latest episode of This Week in Google. It's time for Twig. This Week in Google, we got the band back. To- now, the great thing here is I can also tap the top of it to pause playback or resume it. Alternatively, I can also tap and hold the top in order to invoke the assistant. How many people live in Toronto? The population of Toronto was 2.615 million in 2011. Of course, I can also play music from my music services, which work with the Google system. Okay, Google, play Star Trek Beyond soundtrack. Sure, here's the album Star Trek Beyond on Google Play Music. Okay, Google, turn up the volume. Okay, Google, turn down the volume. Okay, Google, next track. Now, for me, one of the most important uses for the Google Home is home automation. And you can set this up under home control. So this is where you can add your various platforms. Right now, it's kind of limited. So you'll see if we go to add, you'll see Nest and Philips Hue, which I've already added. We also have smart things if you have those products in your house. So once you have those added, you can set up rooms, which I haven't done with this device yet. So it can keep track of what room has what devices in it. So I could say turn off lights in bedroom and it will respond to that command. But right now, I'm just going to go with the basic setup here. Okay. Okay, Google, what's my thermostat set to? It's currently 66 degrees. Okay, Google, increase temperature to 67. You got it, warming up the living room. Okay, Google, turn off the thermostat. Okay, changing the living room to off mode. Okay, Google, turn the heat on to 66 degrees. Okay, setting the heat on the living room to 66 degrees. Okay, Google, change the light strip to blue. You got it, changing the light strip to blue. Okay, Google, change it back to pink. According to Pop Sugar, to get blue flowers, you'll want your soil to be... So as you can see, it doesn't quite keep track of the conversation in terms of home automation, so those are areas that could use some improvement. Okay, Google, dim the lights to 10%. You got it. Setting 9 lights brightness to 10%. Okay, Google, set the lights to 100%. Okay, setting 9 lights brightness to 100%. Okay, Google, what's hello in German? Hello. Okay, Google, what's happy birthday in Polish? Wszystkiego najlepszego. Okay, Google, how many feet are in a kilometer? One kilometer equals 3,280 feet, 10.079 inches. Of course, we have other basic functions, and if you're in a kitchen, this is especially useful. Okay, Google, set a timer for eight minutes. Okay, eight minutes, and here we go. Okay, Google, how much left on the timer? Seven minutes and 54 seconds remaining. Now, if you have Chromecast on your network, you can cast audio from it to those devices. Okay, Google... Play the Star Trek Beyond soundtrack on Chromecast Red. All right, Star Trek Beyond from Google Play Music. Playing on Chromecast Red. Okay, Google, add a Chromecast to my shopping list. Okay, I've added a Chromecast to your shopping list. So exactly where is this shopping list? Well, it's actually under the Keep app. So if you have a Google Pixel, it comes with this Keep app. And assuming you're logged into your account, you'll see that right here, Google Assistant on my shopping list. Now, since the Google Home is basically a Chromecast device with a speaker and a microphone, it basically works the same on your network. So I can cast audio from my mobile phone to my Google Home. So if I go to an app that supports it, like the Music app, I can actually cast this to one of my other Google Homes or to my Chromecast. So for example, I can go ahead and select Studio, click Play, and you can hear the feedback I get on the device. Now I do have remote control access to this device from my phone. So for example, if I go into the Google Home app, you can see my device is currently on the network, which includes a Chromecast and one of my other Google Homes in my office. So right now we're in my studio, so you can see the music that's currently playing on this device. I can click play, I can adjust volume and that sort of thing, or I can just stop casting entirely. Now if we dig into our device settings, there's a few things to know about here, such as guest mode. This allows other users to log into our Google Home without having to connect to our Wi-Fi network. We also have the ability to create a group. This allows us to group our speakers together. So if you have more than one home, you can see we can add them together to create this group. This means that when I play music on one device, it's shared on both. So once you create a group, you'll find that group down below right here. So this allows us to edit the group, change the linked accounts, or just delete the group. And like most voice assistants, you can have some fun with it. Okay, Google, tell me a joke. What did one shark say to the other while eating a clownfish? 
This tastes funny. Okay, Google, what's the meaning of life? I have a factory warranty, so I don't worry about things like that. Okay, Google, what do you think of Siri? You know Siri? What a small world. Hope she's doing well. Okay, Google, what's the best smartphone? Seems like it changes all the time. Okay, Google, how old are you? I was launched in 2016, so I'm still fairly young. Okay, Google, what do you think of Alexa? She seems pretty smart. Now, for the most part, Alexa and Google Home are very similar. The biggest difference really comes down to the fact that Alexa has a much more interactive app and can be controlled from the phone or with a handheld remote control. But one of the bigger differences here is obviously the Google Voice Assistant, which has some capabilities that Alexa doesn't. And really, that comes down to the conversational nature of the Google Voice Assistant. Alexa, how many people live in Toronto? The population of Toronto is about 2,620,000. Alexa, what about Detroit? I wasn't able to understand the question I heard. Now, there's still quite a few things that this cannot do that the assistant on the phone can do. This really is related to the fact that this can only be logged into your account and is not keyed to your voice. So basically, anybody has access to this device with the wake up command. So it does limit some of its capabilities. So, for example, OK, Google, make an appointment for tomorrow at 8 o'clock to complete and post this review. Sorry, I can't add events to your calendar yet. I certainly wouldn't want somebody else to do that on my calendar, so it makes sense that this is restricted currently. Now, for the most part, there's no question that this really is a luxury item. It's not terribly expensive, but it is nice to have, especially in a kitchen where you may not be able to handle your phone for things like setting timers or whatever. Now, for me, I think it's just really cool. It's sort of like using a Star Trek computer. You can talk to thin air and it answers back or responds to a command. That's certainly something I can do with my phone, but there's a little less friction to using this than using your phone. And although it's not the best speaker system, in the world, it's definitely very convenient thanks to voice control, and it does have a great multi speaker setup solution. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at the Google Home. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and I'll see you again in the next video.